Hello everybody and welcome back to another weekly recap. In the weekly recap, I just want to go over anything related to the old school RuneScape community this week. We're not going to be focusing on drama, just on information. So I hope you guys enjoy and let's get started. So to begin with here, we had our weekly content update and that was the Christmas event 2018. The holiday event is normally just a quick quest you can go to to unlock the yearly holiday reward, which is usually a cosmetic item along with a bunch of party hats. Uh, Christmas crackers and some other items you get at the end. Now this year is no different, however the quest is uh, substantially shorter than they have been in the past. Uh, the main reason for this is to reduce the amount of dev time uh, that it takes to make this because this content is only uh, done once. It seems a little bit counterintuitive to waste a lot of time creating them. I will leave a link to a quick written quest guide. Uh, from reddit if you're interested and i'll go over it a bit later in the video so once again worth mentioning uh, it's probably too late now but if you have party hats you should sell them pretty soon because everyone will be getting party hats at the end of this quest along with them dropping them usually around this time now that was the only content update however we got a really awesome dev blog for the kebos lowlands which i'll just quickly go over but it is a pretty long read so i'd suggest uh, going over it in depth so it pretty much highlights all of the people that are working on it so the main mods are mod kiernan monroe and mod ed there is some new graphical work for Mount Karum, which is created by Mod Rai. Uh, the Alchemical Hydra looks so cool right now. The animation has been released and it looks so awesome. I don't think I'll have the Slayer level at the time to kill it, but I'm really looking forward to seeing the content. And they're just going through the creative process on how they are making this area. They said the biggest challenge we've got coming up right now is the development of the Redwood Tree Farming. They are massive and we didn't want to provide a lame Redwood Tree much smaller than the other ones found in the Woodcutting Guild. So Mod Rai has put a huge amount of effort into an attempt to work out a way in which we can provide a full size redwood tree in a farming patch. That's going to look so hilarious, it'll just be massive in the midst of the farming guild. It just goes over some of the art team members as well, it shows uh, map layouts, some animations for the drakes as well as the uh, sulfur lizard. And once again there is a login screen competition as well as a video competition so people can go ahead and win some rewards uh, that they will never receive. And that is it for content updates this week. Next up here, I want to go over some updates related to the old school RuneScape community, but aren't necessarily content updates. Uh, to begin with here, and probably the biggest story of the week is uh, Jagex Ayiza is actually quitting. He has been the community manager here for the last two years, more or less. It's really too bad because he was doing a really excellent job at communicating with a community like this one. <laughs> the reason for him quitting was actually just his commute. His commute to work started off at being about five hours a round trip, which is insanely long. I would never do that. And he did end up renting an apartment closer, but because of family and personal issues, it's just no longer going to work. So he's going to be leaving his job at Jagex behind. So that's really too bad. There is a full video of him going over his reasons for leaving and it's a pretty good video. So I'd go ahead and watch it. There will be a link for that in somewhat of a parting gift. He has been dropping hundreds of holiday items uh, while transformed into a Jad in the Grand Exchange. Kind of funny. Well, this is something that happens pretty much every year, but just be prepared for the market to get flooded with holiday items. Next up here, we have a new release for Rune Light, and this one is a really awesome update. There is a new plugin called the Item Stats plugin, and what happens is when you hover over uh, certain items, it will show you what uh, different stats are going to change based on which items you are equipping. This will be really good for a quick overview on checking what item is going to be better, which stats it gives, or just generally seeing if this item is an upgrade over the previous one. On top of that, the World Switcher plugin now shows the ping of each game world uh, before you're even in it, so you can quickly view which world will give you the best ping. And on top of that, there has been several bug fixes to do with the Rune Light client, but awesome to see more progress on this, and the item stats plugin is really nice. And last up here, a post by Oraris uh, shows a kind of makeshift Christmas event guide. It was posted seven hours ago, and it's actually pretty good for being posted pretty much right away. It just gives you a quick overview on how to do the quest. It shouldn't take more than a few minutes. But I will leave the link in the description for the quest guide, and that is pretty much it for community updates this week. So every week there is a weekly Q&A where the devs go over some of the more important questions that the players have asked them over the last week. We're going to do a quick recap of that Q&A. So to begin with here, over the last week there's been a big push to try to get the poll results hidden uh, before you vote. So that when you vote, you will not be able to see the results of the poll. Afterwards, maybe you could display them, but, but more importantly, they need to be hidden before you vote. And they said hopefully next year. We are currently discussing some changes. Can a charged Dragonfire shield count as warm clothing in the winter tot? Well, it is at Dragonfire and hot, so it does seem reasonable to us. 
Is there a way to speed up cannonball making? Previously, this has been suggested for something to put inside your POH. Is it something that we could do or revisit? If we did, we wouldn't want to make it something like a blast furnace, maybe a new quest, or we could explore it being high level content for your POH. The ZMI rates are quite high, especially with the runners. Was this intentional? If not, what can we do about it? They said, we're not sure if that was intentional or not. The issue is that running essence has always been a thing and adding a block on trading or anything like that would be weird. There could be some niche solutions like making a limit on how many times the altar can be used per hour so that it doesn't impact a single crafters, but then people just move on to another altar. Can Briofita's staff be given a slight buff to standard spellbook bind spells of 1, 2, or 3 seconds? They said it would be cool to have a mechanic that means that players risk additional nature runes, but we'll put it on the backlog for later. The expert mining gloves are underwhelming, how about a very small experience bonus? They said they're not keen on giving it an XP percent buff, however they do agree that they are a bit underwhelming and they could buff them, but in a different way. Why don't you accept applications for player moderators? They said there'll be a lot of wasted time, we get good quality P mods by using data in a manual selection process. Should we nerf uh, Nightmare Zone experience rates? They said yes, it should be nerfed somehow. Maybe not a complete nerf, but just making it so that Nightmare Zone with the rocks isn't the best melee experience in the game. There was a straw poll and 40% say they should nerf it by 25%. 26% of people think you should nerf it by 50% and 9% uh, of people said it should be nerfed by 10%. Are there any ideas on making skilling more competitive than bossing? That is why we've been trying to add interactive skilling methods like blast mine, tight farm, uh, the new Kebos fishing method. When the method feels more interactive, it feels better to give more rewards. If the elves land is expanded, there will be a skilling minigame, so more high tier rewards could come from that. Will the farming demi boss offer a pet or just tangle root? They said it will just offer tangle root. The only pet from the Kebos lowlands is going to be from the alchemical hydra. Will the Slayer Ring have a teleport to the new Slayer location? They're still looking at options for teleports here, and uh, maybe the Diary will have a teleport. Within the next week or so, we should be finished with the actual content, and then we can look at options to teleport in. Can we get another inactive player name release? This is very time consuming, it would be good to get it automated, but the web development team is currently busy with something else. They wouldn't expect it soon, but it is worth discussing internally. Could you update PvP minigames to give more rewards? They said yes, send your suggestions. The PvP minigame Quality of Life Month is in February of 2019. Could the team look at developing more quests that continue on the 2007 quest lines like the Red Axe storyline, the Lunar quest line, or the Fairy Tale quest line? Now that we have a larger dev team, we are better positioned to do this. We're also doing things on old quests, like potentially ending the Elves quest line from 2002. A Taste of Hope also kind of parallel mimics the RS3 version of Legacy of Seergays, and there is also value in doing our own quests with completely unique storylines. Can the Moss Giant in the Wilderness drop the key at half of the normal rate, like Hill Giants do for the Giant Key? Also could Briofita drop in sold Giant Heads like Obor? Yes, we would like to look into that. Could Old School RuneScape use a system to manage ideas like GitHub, essentially like a mind map with different branches for PVM, skilling, etc.? They said that's actually an excellent idea that we could have the mods interact and formalize suggestions rather than just being on Reddit in a Twitter suggestion cycle. It would be cool and a good way to encourage and streamline interaction between JMods and players and suggestions. And that is it for the weekly Q&A. So every week I like to go through uh, Reddit suggestions and find some decent ones to show you guys. So to begin with here we have a suggestion by StratNG and that is Zamrak Wine Cellars. Uh, the big problem here is Wines of Zamrak are not very fun to farm and they rely on hopping between worlds as part of the actual method. His solution is the Zamorak Wine Cellar, a new area underneath the Zamorak Temple north of Falador. The Wine Cellar will be a sort of maze-like area with Zamorak guards patrolling uh, with multiple spots where you could telegraph wines. If seen by a guard, you would be kicked out of the cellar to the other side of the Berthorp wall. This will also give a use to the Falador Diary shortcut there. This would speed up the process of getting wines while making it more interactive as well as making it harder for bots to participate. Hopefully Jagex would be able to balance it so that if you were paying attention, you should be able to run and telegrap in a sort of loop around the maze with a low chance of being caught. It would make uh, gathering wines more fun, makes dwarf weed great again, and one less thing for Ironman to complain about. A really cool idea and I think this would help out a lot. Next up here is a suggestion by Philomathis and that is Remy the Giant Rat Boss. Remy is a free to play boss located in the basement of the Varrock West Bank behind the locked door. In order to access the boss, a player must obtain a Nod Key from a Giant Rat. The Nod Key would be a 1 in 128 drop rate from Giant Rats. It is consumed when used to unlock the door. It would introduce a new free-to-play ring with plus one stab slash and crush. 
and would be a very rare drop from the boss. Since F2P have literally no rings that give any stats, I think it would be kind of nice to give a ring that gives a stat in the free to play. I'm always up for some early game content, especially for free to play, so I think this would be a cool idea. Coming up next is a suggestion by PM me your GP, and that is adding in more superior monsters. There's some that are missing, for example, uh, the Zygomite, the Fossil Island Wyverns, um, Brutal Black Dragons, and some other higher level monsters. He's suggesting the, the Superior Mutated Zygomite, the Jurassic Wyverns, the Barbaric Black Dragon, the Eternal Wyvern, which would be the superior version of the Ancient Wyvern, and the Mythical Kraken, which has a, a awesome picture. I hope it looks exactly like that. The one thing we'd have to keep in mind here is balance, because stuff like Kraken is farmed quite frequently, and a 1 in 35 chance of rolling on the Superior Drop Table is pretty high, and getting all that experience from already good tasks uh, would have to be something to keep in mind. However, it does make sense to add in these superior monsters. Every high-level Slayer monster pretty much has a superior. And the last suggestion here is colored ribbons for the clue scroll. So for example, the easy clue scroll would have a little green coloring, medium would have a bit of red, uh, the hard clue scroll would have a little bit of blue, elite would be yellow, and master would be purple. This is a good suggestion because right now there's no visual way to tell the difference between the different clue scrolls, which is pretty annoying because you just have to right click on them. Having a bit of a unique identifier on each scroll would be extremely useful, even if it's not exactly the suggestion. Making them more unique is always going to help out a lot. And last up here, there's a few nice images from this week. The first one by Stay Salty Plebeians, and that is kind of a nice like paint era-esque drawing of the Grand Exchange. We have a guy doubling money, we got people talking, a skeleton giving directions. I don't even know what's going in the bottom right corner and the guy in a chicken suit. It's got everything you need and the gnome child, of course. And last up here, an image by Ultimate Iron Man Zelda. And it's a congratulations on Settle being the 16th Ultimate Iron Man to max. Also, congrats to you, man. That's an amazing achievement. I really like all the detail, like, like the empty case for the Dragon Warhammer, which is still dry of getting. Anyway, guys, that is it for the weekly recap. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave the video a like, and I will see you next time.